Yeah, so it's like, yeah, yeah there's some. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're ready. Right. So we're ready to go up here. Okay. And we're called the meeting to order. We took a few minutes to work on some technical difficulties, and we, we've got a backup camera streaming, so uh, I think everything is working, working well enough for this meeting. So uh, the meeting is now called to order. We have all board members present, so we definitely have a quorum. Uh, at this time, I'm going to share one comment that I received from a resident, and that was uh, from Darla Eller, who's called to send thanks to the board for the wonderful renovation looking area in our north, at our north gate. She commented that the company that did the work did a fabulous job, the markings look great, and she just wanted to say thanks to the entire board and of course to Public Works for making that happen. So Sean, please share that with your staff and to the board from uh, Mrs. Eller. Thank her for that comment. I thank her for that comment. Carl, <coughs> any other uh, comments we from residents? Okay. So at this time, I'll take a motion to approve the consent, uh, consent agenda. So moved. Second? Second. Okay. Does anyone want to add anything to the agenda at this time? All right. All in favor of approving the consent agenda and the minutes from the last meeting, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Okay. That carries. Now we'll move on to Mike Barber with the club. Mike, do you have a report for us this month? Yeah, I do, Mark. Thanks. Um, it was, so talking about February, we had a very strong operating month. Uh, our transfer of capital um, was quite nice, coming in at 448000 for the month, well ahead of budget and prior year and on a year-to-date basis. Uh, we're in great shape there, too, at 706. Uh, versus last year at 561,000. So uh, a good start for the first two months, uh, despite continued problems with inflation, uh, food costs, labor, fuel, chemicals, you name it. Uh, but we're holding our own there so far. Uh, initiation fees were strong. Uh, membership uh, for the month was uh, plus nine for uh, February were plus 13 year to date with uh, 1,575 golf members and 774 athletic members and total membership at 3,262. And if we could only find two more houses to sell, I'm sure we could add to that, that total. Uh, but everything was good. Club wide engagement was up. so was cold in January. February was a much nicer month. Golf rounds were up. Lesson revenues were up in both uh, racket sports and uh, golf. And our club-wide engagement number came in at 43.9%, uh, just under our target for the year of 44%. So a very strong month of operations for us. Uh, we have not had our board meeting yet, but uh, we'll be having it Thursday morning. And then for all you that want to attend, we have our annual meeting uh, Thursday night at 7 o'clock at Palmetto. So we'll review last year, review the financial statements and, and so forth, and then take questions at the end of uh, that presentation. So that's about it, uh, unless anybody has any, any questions for the club. Anyone have questions for Mike? No questions? Thank you, Mike. Good luck with your annual meeting. All right. Okay, Carl, uh, association business and then reports and action items. Okay, just a few highlights to hit. You'll probably saw the uh, backyard buzz that came out today about the incident at the dog park uh, on social media. We did have security reports for that, so we're still following through that process. Ultimately, the dog park committee will be taking a look at the different reports and we'll see if we move forward with the actions on that. A security committee will get involved as well too. So 
I don't want to get into the specifics, but just know there is a process, and that's what we wanted to get out there uh, today with the uh, email. Uh, you already mentioned about the paving. The paving is going along nicely for the uh, asphalt, also the switching over of the uh, concrete for the paths, and we've been getting very good responses on that. So we've had uh, starting to get some rain, uh, getting some challenges, and sometimes the asphalt's not always ready for us or the concrete, but they've been working through that process really well. Um, I do want to point out uh, that if you haven't paid your annual dues, they are due by the end of the month. The penalties begin April 1. We put out an email to the residents uh, this afternoon who uh, we, we haven't either put on the monthly or quarterly payment plan or haven't paid yet. So uh, the number's less than last year at this time, so that is coming along nicely. But we are going to keep reminding people over the next week or so to make sure they get their payments in. The um, uh, only other item I wanted to mention was you're seeing uh, more of our 50th anniversary items coming on. If you go to landings.org slash 50th, 50th, that's where you can see the schedule of events, all of the uh, golden nuggets that we have of the interesting things that we've uh, accomplished over the last 50 years. So uh, it's, it's a good celebration of what we've done and also a look ahead. So I did want to let people know that... Um, uh, there's a group working behind the scenes and our first big event will be on May 15th. Hey Carl, quick yes, question. Sir. Do we communicate to the club when we're paving specifically to the club? We had a situation actually, it was in, in the middle of in the member member Friday where we ran right into fresh asphalt and it turned around a whole bunch of golf carts. Of, in, but it, I just was wondering. Yes, and, and Sean, I'll turn it over to Sean on that. Yeah, we do. We communicate directly with Tyson, Chris, Scott um, on those. I'll say the biggest difficulty and challenge we have is the fluidity of the process. And when the trucks are ready, the asphalt plants up and we have good weather, we're paving. Um, we're, we're coordinating actually this morning for next Tuesday for Romerley and the crossover between two and three with another tournament occurring in the shotgun at one. And so we try, and we usually will have the pros out working, trying to transition people across. And you know, ultimately with the club, we give them the confirmation that we will get them across one way or another. Yeah, it, it just was the timing was just bad, Sean. With exactly when they had laid one side of the road down fresh, right? You cannot take a golf cart over there. Not until the road. So the guy was sitting in the middle of like six people, or eight pairs, of six eight people. And I had to kind of jump in there and go, guys, we just have to turn around and go back another route. And circle around. Um, but it always, and this happened one other time just coincidentally with me, it always seems like the golfers don't know that this could happen out there. Mm. I figured we were talking to the club. We are, and I, I would say with some of the bigger projects, we'll even get the pros involved so that the pros can get out with the golfers. And like with the Laney Boy South project last year, we actually had the pros at the transition points directing everyone and yeah. handing out free drinks kind of thing <laughs> if they were inconvenient. So. It's all good. I'm just curious about the opportunity. All yeah. Right. Thanks. You're welcome. <clears throat> okay. Does anybody have any questions um, for staff? All right, uh, Jessica for the monthly financial report. Okay, thanks Carl. Um, the financial information is gonna start on page 14 in your packet. Total cash at the end of February equal 13.4 million. Total investments equal 721,000. You'll see a shift next month from cash to investments. We're currently placing uh, cash that we have into U.S. Treasuries and CDs with the increased uh, interest rates that we've been currently seeing. Total operating revenue at the end of February was 82,000 more than budget and more than where we were at the end of February 2021. Total operating expense before depreciation was 147,000 less than budget and less than where we were at the end of February of 2021. Net operating revenue after depreciation equals 63,360, which is 230,000 better than our budget. 
A few of those reasons on the revenue side, on our rental income, we're seeing better tele telecommunications lease revenue than our budget projected and better than last year. Fuel sales are performing better than budget, mainly due to both volume and the price of fuel has increased since 2021. There were two local marinas that their fuel systems are currently down, so we may be pulling some of their sales um, while they're out of service. Our other income performing better than budget, mainly due to the Comcast revenue share. This was budgeted to be received in March, and we actually have that in February. Staffing expenses are performing better than budget, mainly due to vacancies, uh, more than where we were last year. In 2021, we used uh, the forfeited funds for our 401k employer, employer share of that expense. Dredging expense is currently better than budget. We had planned incrementally through, we placed the budget incrementally throughout 2022. And this year, the contractor is going to be paid at full completion of the project. And that's in the final phases and will be wrapped up soon. Repair maintenance performing better than budget, mainly due to camera maintenance. Uh, we've seen less expense this year, um, year to date, than what we had, had planned. Capital reserve expenditures, we've spent 114,000 to date out of a $4.8 million budget. And as you're hearing, Carl mentioned and Sean mentioned, the roads projects and those storm drains and cart paths were just now starting. So these numbers will continue to change um, each month as we go through the reporting process. The member's equity balance at the end of February was 13.011 million which is an increase of 646,000 since December of 2021. Our accounts receivable aging, we have 29 accounts for non-assessments that are 90, 90 plus days past due. Seven of those are with our collection attorney. And on the assessment side, these are the um, assessments from previous years. Last year at the same time, we had nine from the, the current 2021 and years prior. We're currently at four. Um, as Carl mentioned, we ran, uh, we sent an email notification today. We had 584, 585 accounts that uh, currently still have a balance. We are better than where we were last year. We were around 604 this, at this time last year. This, I wanted to mention our payment plan enrollment. We've seen some increases in both the monthly and the quarterly compared to last year. We're, we're at 118 um, enrollment and people that are enrolled in our monthly plan and 229 in the quarterly plan compared to last year both of those categories have increased so we're happy to have that participation any questions that anybody may have questions for jessica no thank you jessica okay and uh, uh, is monica doing the property and council insurance renewal yes okay monica yes the staff report and supporting documentation for our 2022-23 insurance property and casualty insurance renewal. So I'm just going to walk you through a, a couple of highlights um, and changes in this year's So looking at our commercial liability, we see a 2% change in year. Our commercial in the month is a 9% increase. Our commercial auto is also a 9% increase. For a nine percent increase, and you they put in below are comparing our twenty comparing to twenty twenty and twenty twenty two pre robust internet. Here you will notice that we have picked up another character mark. Uh, that is to help us get back to our full two million dollars in umbrella coverage, as Westfield had their coverage from ten million dollars to five million this year. So the break this year will be five million from Westfield, five Markel, our new carrier, and ten million from Cincinnati. Our workers' compensation increased last year, and this is primarily due to from twenty twenty. Excuse me, Monica, you're breaking. You're breaking up. <clears throat> Monica, you're breaking up. We're having a hard time hearing you. I don't know. Um, uh, 
Um, is this better? Yes. Yes. Okay. Do you need me to go back and review any of those? or? Um, pick it up from here, and then we can see what questions there are. Perfect. Okay. So in, com in commercial property wet and dry, we see a 26% increase in premium, and that is primarily due to increased exposure for higher building valuations and the cost to replace due to inflation. In marine liabilities, we see a 33% increase, and that's primarily due to an increase in business income at the marinas, as well as an increase in wages and benefits. And the marinas were fully staffed this year compared to 80% staffed um, as they were budgeted, excuse me, last year, um, as they were budgeted at 80%. The marine excess liability bumper shoot, we see a 40% increase, and that's primarily due to the hardening marketplace for marine <coughs> excess liability. We will also note that our broker fee has remained flat for 40 um, for 2022-2023 at $45,000. So just a couple of things the insurance committee requested um, for USI to follow up on as we went through this renewal process. We did ask for Westfield to quote us at the $10 million in excess umbrella coverage. As I mentioned on a previous slide, they came back at $5 million, which is why we picked up the um, additional carrier. We asked Philadelphia to quote $10 million in excess umbrella to see how that would have compared to the Westfield $10 million quote. Um, but of course, since Westfield did not quote the 10 million, um, we kind of, the Philadelphia quote is kind of no longer um, in the run there. The Cincinnati quote, we asked um, for 10 million in excess liability, which they did agree to, as I mentioned on the previous slide. And then we also asked for the USLNH, um, which is the United States Longshore and Harbor Workers Compensation Act endorsement um, on our marina's coverage to just have USI ensure that that was actually um, an endorsement on that coverage. From the fiscal standpoint, the premium for the attached lines of coverage is $767,986 from April 1st, 2022 through March 31st, 2023. This represents an 18% increase over last year's premium, and our insurance was budgeted with an increase of 10% as recommended uh, by our brokers um, at USI last fall. So the impact to the 2022 total insurance budget is looking to be $35,830, and the Finance Committee has voted to approve the not-to-exceed amount of $767,986. So therefore, we are hereby requesting the Board of Directors to approve the 2022-2023 premium for commercial and property insurance in the amount not to exceed 767.986. Thank you, Monica. Do we have any questions? The, uh, we've heard partially, there was a little breakup in the beginning. So what I'm gonna do is, is open it up for any questions, but I'm gonna first say that the, the uh, Insurance subcommittee has looked at this, finance committees looked at this, and then we received a briefing from Monica at the board workshop on this as well. Uh, so there were a, a little bit of uh, technical difficulties with sound there in the beginning. Does any board member have questions related to the presentation? Anyone? Karen. I thought I heard, Monica, that you all were going back to one of the insurers uh, to see if they could maybe uh, sharpen, th you know, uh, let's say the pencil a little better and get a little better rate than 18%. I'll, I'll, I'll jump into that just in case we have any more audio issues. So this 767 assumed we were staying with Westfield potentially. We are going to be switching over part of our coverage to Philadelphia. So it's probably going to be in the 750 range instead of 767. It's, it, this market is just, they, they call it a hardening market when it's harder to get coverage. And it's, it's been a challenge for us. So this is later in the day. Normally we have the finalized number by even the board meeting, but uh, our brokers are still going back and trying to make sure we have the right coverages. We don't have exclusions we don't want. And uh, we have to get it in place by April 1. So it should be a little bit lower than this number right here. 
and call for that overage or the potential uh, savings that are there, if we're able to get from five to ten million on the umbrella, <coughs> I would assume we would apply that seventeen to get whatever we. We're can doing do twenty million on the umbrella, but instead of being able to do it through one or two carriers, we're having to do three carriers. So um, originally, Westfield wanted to only do five. And wanted to do one, and now we have them to five, but then we're getting another carrier with five on top of that and then 10 on top of that. So we're having to uh, farm it out to three people instead of one or two this year. But we're gonna keep the 20. Good. Yes. Any other questions or clarification needed on this issue? Okay, we have a request for a motion to approve the property casual insurance renewal in the total premium not to exceed $767,986. At this point, I'm looking for a motion to approve this. So moved. Second? Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. All right, thank you. Uh, Jessica, back to you for the assessment reallocation. Each year at the end of um, the year when we approve the budget in December, we ask for a motion to adopt a resolution. If there is any room that we have found throughout the year in the budget, the year in the estimates, to reallocate from our operating fund to our capital reserves fund. So in 2021, there was a motion that was approved to reallocate $235 per lot from the operating fund to the capital reserves fund. However, we made that um, we made that to be done and completed in two parts. The first part occurred in December of last year, which was $678,408. And the second piece of that is what we are asking for a motion today to be able to move that cash that's in operating to the reserves fund of 360,292. We looked at our cash flow statements and we managed that down on the operating side to our board policy level of 1.5 operating cash. And then we that is that is derived from our net revenues. However, our net revenues included our employee retention tax credit, which we have discussed through most of last year. We haven't received all of that yet. However, we're in a positive cash position with the, with the majority of our cash coming in right now for assessments, and we would like to go ahead and, and take the opportunity to get the motion to reallocate that last remaining piece of, of operating cash to reserves from 2021. Okay, so we have a recommendation for the board to adopt the resolution authorizing the 2021 assessment reall reallocation as described by Jessica. Looking for a motion to approve or adopt that resolution. I move. Second. A second. Any questions, comments about this? None. All in favor of adopting the resolution, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Okay, the board approves that resolution. All right, thank you. And now we have our community development report with Aaron. All right, we just want this presentation really quickly. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm happy to present the community development uh, department activity for February of 2022. So, to start off, um, our permit activity. Uh, from the community development department is is on par with where we were last year, just a little bit over that, um, and kind of in keeping with where we were last month at 125 of 109. Um, the number of applications reviewed by the ARC um, is actually up a little bit from this time in 2021, um, but it's on par with where we were last month. So we're continuing to see um, significant ARC activity. Just a summary of that activity. What um, what we've had over the last month yeah. is one well, new hold on, hold on one second. Uh, Aaron, hold on. Three Excuse so me. far in twenty twenty two. Aaron, hold Aaron. on one second. Yeah. And can you hit close on that? There you go. Okay. okay. All right. Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> there we go. 
Sorry about that. Okay, Aaron, I think we're back and ready. Okay, can you see my presentation? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, great. So um, I was just saying that the summary of the activity, the construction activity, we had one new home completed, making a total of three for the year. One new home broke ground, so we've got a total of 38 active construction sites, new construction sites. Um, we have seven major improvements, 61 minor improvements, 29 dumpsters, pods, and border johns, and 25 permit extension requests. So what we're seeing in that trend is that the permitting activity is similar to that of 2021, which was significantly increased over 2020 and the, in the years prior. The majority of the permitting is for those minor improvements, maintenance, such as painting and re-roofing. Major improvements are for those outdoor features like porches and patios. Um, and then, of course, that, that the permit extension request is on the rise. So I put these charts together just to kind of show the, the, the change in that. So if you look at the blue portion of the circle, um, where it's increased from 14% to 23%, kind of showing how much we've increased, uh, almost 10% from this time last year. Um, with our PPMS violations, we're kind of on par with where we were last year, 15 um, this year versus 12 of last year. Um, and with our courtesy notices, we're actually down a little bit um, from where we were this time last year because um, we're, we're approaching this with a couple of different um, communication platforms where we've been uh, focusing on some of our news you can use, e-news articles and more frequent journal articles to see if we can um, get better compliance in the community with education on those platforms. Um, so the summary of the inspection activity for the last month, we had 205 site visits for ARC inspections. Um, and just over 1,500 proactive PPMS um, inspections. Those were in phase one, phase two in Deer Creek, and then we had 34 violations result through verbal or written correspondence. Um, that is all I have to present today. Are there any questions? Any questions for Aaron? No? Thank you, Aaron. Very thorough. Thank all right. you. Thank you. Now we have the monthly security report. Security Director Tim Cook is at a security conference. The security Office Manager Erica Kersey, uh, she's on there, will be giving the report. Erica? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Can you see the presentation? Yes, we can. Um, so this is just the statistics for February. The part one crimes were down one. Um, total burglaries and thefts, which are inclusive of part one crime, um, stayed the same at two, as did vandalism at one and trespass at zero. The part one crime in February was actually a burglary with a forced entry at a residence on Tomachichi. Um, the resident uh, noted that clothing and a pistol were missing. Uh, it was a window that had been uh, forced into, and they believe it might have been a family member. Um, other thefts and vandalism, there was a resident on Highland Lane who had a package that was delivered and then missing, and then a resident on Cotton Crossing who had a home under construction said that they noted the railing around their hot tub had been torn down, and when they checked with the contractor, he had not done that. Here to date, crime stats um, were still down on part one crimes, three as opposed to one last year. Burglaries and thefts are the same at five. Um, vandalism is the same at two. And trespass were up one from the same time last year. For the golf cart stats, we um, are actually up on the number of reported complaints. Um, from one to two, so we're up 100%. <laughs> 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 the golf cart citation issued, um, we're actually down 58.3% um, from 12 to 5. And then for total fines issued, we are actually up a little bit, 16%, um, with 174 total fines and violations. And then for February, we had two unlicensed driver violations, one unregistered cart, zero traffic related, and zero parking related. The total fines for February issued were $75. And then if you have not seen Tim's article, 
Um, we are selling safety fashion for walkers, um, bikers, runners, uh, skateboarders, anybody who wants them. They are reflective and they're $25 each. If you are interested in one, you can send an email to security supervisors at the end of the And that's all I have. Any questions? Any questions for Eric? Erica, nice job, and uh, compliments on your fashion forward sashes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, now, I'm Larry with Lanes Harbor Generator Project. Good afternoon. Um, on uh, page 38 uh, in your packet, there's a staff report followed by a capital project request form. This uh, report is recommending a contract with Selectric LLC to install uh, a generator at Landings Harbor Marina. Uh, the cost of the generator is $31,362. We're looking for a 10% contingency for any unknown uh, issues that we may come across, as well as uh, we know that we're going to upgrade the gas lines uh, to support this, the size generator that we have. So the total project cost is $34,498. Um, when, when the harbor loses power, uh, we're pretty much strapped. We, we lose our computers, we lose our phone system, our security cameras, our point of sale, uh, our fuel system. So you know, being able to sell product and, and be able to maintain the operation is, is very, very difficult. Uh, we break out pens and papers and we start writing things down to try to keep track of our sales. Uh, outside of the fuel because we need electric for fuel. Um, uh, in addition to that, we do have some perishables at the, on, the, on the property, freezers, coolers, uh, bait freezers. If anyone knows what uh, bad bait smells like, let's sit in the freezer for a couple hours uh, in 98-degree uh, weather. It's not good. Um, uh, so, it, you know, we're adversely affected when we lose power. Uh, we, we look for three contractors to uh, provide proposals. Um, Selectric LLC is recommended. They did have the lowest price. Uh, they also had a generator that was coming in uh, in April that they allocated to our to our uh, project if they had uh, won the, the bid. Um, the other two were anywhere from anywhere from six to ten months out for delivery on a new unit. Uh, so supply chain issues, uh, not surprisingly there. Um, the, the total, uh, we did budget for this uh, last year at uh, $36,186 uh, using a, uh, the funding would be a cash from our operating account. Uh, there, from, from here, once the generator gets installed, we then place it into the camp for future replacement, repairs, maintenance, that sort of thing. Um, we will be working with uh, Atlanta Gas Light uh, to do the upgrade on the gas, uh, a natural gas line that feeds the property. Uh, and that's where some of the contingency may come in if you have to upgrade the fuel line supplying the meter. Uh, they will replace the meter uh, for no charge, but the gas line is a separate item. Uh, the uh, Marina Committee did accept uh, and approve this purchase uh, on the 10th, and Finance uh, Committee did approve the purchase on the 14th. So staff is recommending a, uh, an approval of a contract with Selectric LLC in the amount of $31,362 with a 10% contingency for total of the project is $34,498. Okay. Thank you, Larry. Question? We're looking for a, at this time, for a motion to approve the recommendation uh, of the contract with Select LLC in the amount of $34,498, including contingency for the generator at the marina. Uh, we have a motion to approve? Yes, we have a second? Second. Okay. Any comments, questions? <clears throat> no. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Okay. The uh, motion is approved. Thank you.
Board Committee and Special Reports. Governance, Judy. Yes, um, thanks, Mark. So I will let Sean uh, make a short presentation here. Governance um, approved a, uh, a, a particular fee structure for the um, Sunset Room. Sunset Room, thank you. I was going to say Delaval Marina. No, it's <laughs> low. Sorry. For the Sunset Room, yes. This came to governance. We approved it. Um, and so I'll let Sean go ahead and do a brief explanation, and then we'll ask. I'll me. actually, I'm going to let Ingrid, uh, our facilities <laughs> okay. and grounds manager, yeah, pass the buck. We're passing it down the line. Yeah, so Ingrid will give you a run through those staff report with you. Good afternoon, everyone. So, as um, Judy spoke of, um, we had um, uh, new neighbors come to us real quick and um, say that the demand for additional gathering spaces for non-club members has increased. And there's just nowhere for anybody to go. So everybody knows that the Del Gal Marina Sunset Room is a beautiful location and everybody wants to be there. Um, we looked at everything and decided that the first Tuesday of the month would be a perfect time to open it up on a trial basis at a reduced rate of $150 the first Tuesday of each month. So, um, the interest groups that would be involved in all this or are the um, special interest groups or the 501c3 and the 501c7s, which include CCA, New Neighbors, Getaway Audubon, and Land Lovers. Um, so we're going to put aside that day as a trial basis. Um, there will be a reduced rental rate of $150 um, that they will um, pay to the admin department. The building will be open from 10 in the morning till 8 at night. Um, so what does 150 get you? It gets you a room set up of uh, five tables and eight chairs per table, 40 people. Um, we clean it, break it down, clean it again, um, and it's there for their use. Um, there are no special requirements or special setups or anything. It is just a additional gathering space. So we're looking for a recommendation um, from the group um, to approve a reduced rental rate for the Del Gal Marina Sunset Room for the 50C3s and the 501C7s, the nonprofit organizations, um, in the amount of $150 for the first Tuesday of each month from April to December, hours from 8 a.m. to I mean, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And, and we just dis we discussed this at workshop, and we'll we'll take some questions or comments on this sure. in, in a moment. Um, so the recommendation is to approve a motion to approve a reduced rent reduced. I'm gonna do it now. Let's <laughs> it start. I just don't want you to feel out of place here. <laughs> A, a reduced rental rate for the Delegal Marina Sunset Room for 501c3 and 501c7 nonprofit organizations in the amount of $150 on the first Tuesday of each month from April 2022 to December 2022 from the hours of 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Is there a motion to approve this reduced rate? Moved. Second. Second. Okay. Questions, comments? So the intent, the intent would be to allow the groups that are applicable, that it applies to, kind of break up the day. Correct. And that if this motion is passed, those organizations will be contacted and told uh, to contact you in terms of the block of time they want. Is that how it works? So they would, they would actually, whoever reserves a room during those times, which most likely is going to be new neighbors, would then set up and, and manage the times that their groups would be in there. So it would be between new neighbors, land lovers are the main two that are interested, and mostly card playing groups is what they're looking to have in, during this time. Um, and so they'll have it in hourly increments uh, throughout the day. They don't foresee filling the entire time, but just having the availability to be able to schedule those. And again, a lot of this with the trial is to be able to understand and plan uh, so they know the first Tuesday they can, from 10 to 12 o'clock, that's when certain card group is in there, and from 2 to 4 is another card group. Or the meetings in those organizations. Exactly, if they need to use it for that purpose. And then tell me, who's going to manage the scheduling? 
So we'll reserve the room out and it'll be as available and it most likely will be new neighbors um, that, that's starting that process that's been working with all the, the different nonprofit groups right now. CCA and um, Audubon have not requested it as of this time. New neighbors and land lovers are, are interested. Thank you. So and it is a test for a few months, so it's like eight, seven, eight days. So we'll see what we learn and what we So I guess two, two things to stress on this, and, and it has been mentioned this is a trial period, as Ingrid yes. is saying, a trial period during this time. If it doesn't work, it, it's something that can be ended in, in December or before if it doesn't Correct. work. There are some logistic questions about this, and that will be handled during this trial period to see how well it works. Andre. Because the intention is to have a single payer for the day, Correct. and that person is in charge of the day. So Correct. They, Correct. They, sublet, they sublet the room to whatever groups they assign it to. So nobody should contact you and say, I'm a member of this, I want to use that room for the whole day. Correct. 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 But again, it's important that the intent is every organization will have the ability to try and get time. Correct. 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 And Mary Lee Beach, um, who was on the Public Works Committee, brought this to our attention. And, you know, we're always looking for additional gathering spaces. I mean, there's, there's just not enough room on the island to house everybody. I mean, people rent this room at night. You know, what do we rent during the day after the card rooms are done at the club? The churches. The churches only have so much space and there's only so many churches. You know, it just... Well, it, it is certainly thinking outside of the box and, and I applaud Mary Lee Beach uh, for coming up with the idea and presenting it and uh, for Public Works uh, bringing it to the board's attention. Uh, it obviously, as we talked about in board workshop, it has some logistical um, challenges but uh, we'll see how that works. But it will be one payer, and then that payer will. And it's very possible that there'll be a month where no one reserves it, and it, it sits, but it's a, it's sitting there available for on that day if someone so chooses, such as new neighbors or one of the other three groups. Okay. Any other questions or comments about this? All right, there has been a motion. It has been, we've received a second. So now we're looking for a vote uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Okay. Thank you very much. It's approved. Thank you. All right. Uh, directors' comments and questions. Any directors have comments or questions at this time? Anyone from the board? All right. President's report. Uh, I will do want to say that we had a nice annual meeting uh, on March 3rd, which we heard the financial review from 2021, uh, operations preview of 2022, received questions and comments, and we had some very, very nice questions and comments, uh, some that have, uh, have brought, uh, been brought forward on to staff and to the board at the board workshop and will continue being discussed and monitored and looked at as we move forward. Uh, concerns that uh, are related to, uh, to many people on the island. So we will continue looking at those as we move forward. Staff will, and of course the board will as well. Uh, at this point, we'll look for, I look for a motion to adjourn and go to executive session. Second. Second? Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay? We are going to executive session. All right. Thanks, all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.